Did you know that had Edison stood its grounds, entire global infrastructure, including the electric wire in our houses, would instead of the direct current operate off of the alternating one? It wasn't long before the beginning of the 20th century when Nikola Tesla invented methods for generation and transmission of alternating current and constructed electric motors operating off such alternating current. And we all know that Tesla did win that fight. Alternating current is advantages in that its voltage can be decreased and increased, which facilitates long-distance transmission. Besides, the alternating current is spread with lower losses. In order to calculate losses of the direct current due to the resistance of the transmission line, we need to first determine the resistance of the line and then insert it into the power equation. For example, if we take a power line transmitting direct current at 1000 amperes with an unrealistically low resistance of 0.1 ohm, losses at such line would constitute 10 megawatt. Besides, the voltage drop for such line would amount to over 1 kilovolt. Despite the aforementioned, the fight for returning direct current is still on at the industrial arena. Apart from pluses, the alternate current has a number of minuses and more specific difficulties with respect to maintaining the accurate flow frequency and phase alignment. A generator should have the same current frequency and phase as in the power network. Otherwise, truly awful things could happen. The alternate current has a number of issues with homogeneous power networks set up on the entire territory of an average country, more specifically with the differences in phases in different network sections and the power coefficient. It's also interesting that almost all of the home appliances, including an APC, immediately convert the alternating current into the direct one and then use a switching power unit to decrease its voltage to the values required for correct operation of the system. The majority of electronic subsystems operate at a voltage of 1 to 48 volts. One more reason for a possible transition to the direct current is a growing demand for alternating power sources. Solar panels, for example, generate energy as direct current, which has to be converted into the alternating one for further transmission. As LED slowly replace incandescent bulbs and fluorescent lamps, the need for direct current will continue to grow. Just like in other cases, the direct current for less is generated by a switching power supply unit. All of the aforementioned reasons gave birth to an entire movement for return of direct current, at least in household power networks. It's rather doubtful that Edison's followers would win the fight that has long been over, but it's quite possible the two towers would peacefully coexist under common roofing.